Hi, how what's up guys? So I'm still in the south of France basking in the sun. No, absolutely not. I can't stand the sun. Have you seen that fucking spot on my face? <laughs> the sun doesn't do anything good for me. So that's why I go jogging at like 7 30, 8 a.m. in the morning so that I can avoid the sun or I put a cap or something. Sorry, I have to uh, put on my sunglasses. Uh, but basically, I've got green, green eyes and again, my uh, my eyes can't stand the, the sun really. But anyway, so I'm in Nice still, in the south of France and uh, enjoying it. It's uh, I live in a, a very lovely district called Simier. Uh, in Nice and uh, it's one of like the oldest uh, districts in, in Nice um, it, it goes way, way back to the, uh, the Middle Ages even actually prehistoric times so um, I'm here and I'm uh, doing sorry about the noise I'm doing lots of work I'm working my ass off actually to be honest because not only am I you know managing the day-to-day -day affairs of my of our law firm Crefovi which uh, provides legal advice to the creative industries between Paris and London and internationally. But I also day trade, I've started. Okay, at the moment I'm paper trading because I want to know what I'm doing first uh, and uh, basically, you know, do some virtual trading through paper trading. And then when, once I've uh, finally grasped how to, uh, to do some swing trades and scalping and and option buying and stuff step by step i'll get into uh into a proper day trading i mean i've always been investing since i was like 23 when i started working so i've got 23 20 years of uh, plus of uh, uh investing experience but trading is nothing uh like investing long term day trading in particular is absolutely it doesn't have any uh, common points with like the investor mentality. But I really enjoy it, it's really fun, you know, intraday trading and uh, all sometimes, you know, swing trades, which are, can span one or two weeks. It really is fun. And it's a very good complement with uh, basically, you know, providing some business law the uh, advice to the creative industries because you know what at the moment sadly the creative industries are half dead there's nothing happening they need a public they need some public you know ve ve venues to show their stuff uh, trade shows um, live performances and they can't do that at the moment because of this fucking covid thing and also in particular these stupid uh, restrictive policies that uh, governments are putting in place. I mean, I'm saying stupid, but it is true that it is a proper dilemma uh, for, uh, for uh, governing entities as to, you know, how to manage this health risk, public health risk in public places. I think France has gone far too far in imposing that pass, which means that basically if you are not vaccinated, you cannot do anything in France. You can't move you can't travel you can't take the train you can't take flights you can't even go to the supermarket uh you can't go to restaurants so it's really intense in france uh, where i am at the moment so basically at the moment i'm doing nothing except from hikes in the mountains and um and uh uh yeah and um, you know yoga at my place and also uh uh, basically running in the morning, which is already quite cool, but it, it is either all outdoors or uh, or at my place, at my home here in Nice. So yeah, it's really kind of a weird situation. But what I can tell you as a, an expert advising the creative industry is that the market, the markets for the you know like the art market, fashion market, there's nothing, nothing like the cinema stuff, nothing is happening. So it's quite sad. But I'm sure it will come back probably in 2022. Uh, you know, hopefully in September 2021 onwards, there are going to be some um, in-person trade shows in Paris and in London, we'll see. But uh, what I've noticed is that all those virtual meetings and stuff is doing nothing good for the creative industries. They're just 
and they just don't have the money to afford legal services. They don't have any projects, you know, where they, where they would have to reach out to lawyers like ourselves. So anyway, as I was saying, day trading and intraday trading is a great uh, way to supplement our income, but also, especially through proprietary trading, but also it really is great because it gives me a totally different perspective on the markets. And what I have noticed actually last uh, Wednesday, Thursday, is that the, all the um, equities, but all the markets like the securities markets are dominated by, by what is happening in the United States. So on Wednesday evening, our time in France, in Europe, the Fed released a, um, a press release whereby it said that it would actually change its assets buying policy and it would stop uh, buying assets. You know, um, I can't remember what the strategy is basically. Oh yeah, uh, quantitative easing, I think it's called, where you basically buy assets to put some liquidity in the market. And so the Fed said, just said, well, we're going to stop doing that. We need to stop buying assets and quantitative easing, you know, guys, because now you're, you're on your own, so, so to speak. Uh, and bang, immediately all the markets in the world, I mean, at least in Europe and, uh, and the US, obviously, just dropped quite a few basis points, you know, but I mean, serious basis points. The CAC 40, the FTSE 100, the um, SBF 250, which is a, an index of uh, mid cap to large cap, uh, 250 sh shares in France, the DAX in Germany, uh, and of course the NASDAQ and the N uh, NYC just dropped quite literally, um, quite, uh, uh, sorry, quite a lot um, uh, in, in terms of basis points. I was flabbergasted. I mean, someone from, I think, from, from the Fed is saying something and bang, that affects all the markets. Uh, even the equities markets, I'm not talking about the bonds markets here, obviously, I'm talking about the equities indexes, and, and it really did have an, aff an effect, you know, like a, a consequence on the markets. So all my trades, on my paper trading account <laughs> completely blew up, because I was uh, not very smart in the sense that I had put my trades in on the Wednesday afternoon, um, you know, being quite bullish, thinking that the markets would go, go up because at the moment, except from his Fed's, uh, you know, uh, press release, things are pre looking pretty uh, solid and the equities markets are really, really bullish at the moment, most of them in, in any case. And so I put all my trades at a particular, uh, you know, entry price and take profit price with a very bullish strategy in place and bang! <laughs> Thursday morning, I looked at the markets and I see everything is tanked. I was like, what's going on here? And so I started reading the news and I saw that. So all my trades were fucked. Excuse my French. Thank God it was on my paper trading account. And so, you know, the damage was limited. But I just really understood how, you know, the US still really um, a powerhouse in terms, of, in terms of basically the, you know, the securities. Uh, the securities market in this world and so that was interesting and um, yeah so I'm learning lots of stuff in that and um, it gives me a new perspective on the world economy bye for now guys lovely talking to you